I thought, man, all these musicians really need to start learning how to make their own videos for their music. So I put out an open call on X this summer, and I, I said that because two aspects of this. One was this is an opportunity for all these musicians to create video. And then two, if they don't, AI visual artists like myself who dabble in music are now dabbling in music creation and there's all kinds of AI music generators out there that are getting better and better all the time. So that traditional musicians who aren't publishing themselves are gonna be left behind with other people getting into music today, creating just a good quality tomorrow. So I put out this open call, I said, listen, do it or reach out to me. And ever since then, people have been reaching out to me. Ben Nash is a visionary full-stack creator based in Cincinnati, Ohio, who marries design, code, and artistic flair to craft digital products, websites, fabricated signage, and AI art. With an adventurous backpacking spirit and a degree in industrial design honed in innovative hubs like San Francisco and Austin, Ben's diverse background fuels his creative work. As a Webby Award nominee and with four patents to his name, Ben's inventive genius is patent approved. He's an expert front-end developer and UX designer by day and an artist by night whose mantras include form follows function, add style, and thinking big and iterating daily. As an accomplished AI artist, Ben contributes financially to open source web tools and hosts intellectual conversations at the intersection of technology and art online, and most notably on Twitter spaces. Ben and I met through Cincinnati's burgeoning AI scene at the Cincy AI Meetup for Humans that I co-host with Kendra Ramirez at the UC Digital Futures building. Fueling his next creative and career trajectory, I was impressed with Ben's prolific work and AI art challenges that he gives himself. He's also part of the upcoming AI collaboration to recreate Terminator 2 as a parody. He's one of 50 artists who want to push the limits and showcase what is possible using the latest AI tools, which you'll learn more about in our conversation. In today's episode, discover how Ben collaborates with musicians on AI music videos and how he sees AI-generated characters emerging as the next celebrities, and his thoughts on the future of immersive video with Apple Vision Pro. We dive more into his DevNell project, which pushed Ben to create 12 music videos using one of his favorite AI video tools, Neural Frames. Our conversation includes other AI tools that he uses and is experimenting with, plus Ben's creative process and the democratization of creativity. Enjoy. But have you ever thought, what if this is all just a dream? Welcome to Creativity Squared. Discover how creatives are collaborating with artificial intelligence in your inbox, on YouTube, and on your preferred podcast platform. Hi, I'm Helen Todd, your host, and I'm so excited to have you join the weekly conversations I'm having with amazing pioneers in the space. The intention of these conversations is to ignite our collective imagination at the intersection of AI and creativity to envision a world where artists thrive. Ben, welcome to Creativity Squared. It is so great to have you on the show. Thanks. Thanks, Helen. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Well, I heard your name a lot. Uh, Kendra Ramirez, as soon as I told her about my show, she's like, you have to meet Ben. He's he's amazing. Uh, but for those who are meeting you for a first time, can you tell us who you are and your origin story? Yeah, for sure. Um, my name is Ben Nash, originally born in Ohio, uh, not too far from Cincinnati where we met. Um, But grew up mostly in North Carolina, Uh, went to NC State School of Design, uh, where I got my degree in industrial design. Did that for a few years, but uh, also studied computer science at a school and uh, did my first HTML web page back in 1993, if you can believe it. So um, I had a most of my career has been in web design and development for most of the 2000s, um, where I lived out in uh, California. Um, both uh, LA, North, Northern California and Southern California and uh, LA and San Francisco mostly. Um, but also a few years in Lake Tahoe. Um, and then uh, besides web development and web design, I've had a, a, some career in many, uh, 
fabrication, manufacturing. Um, I had a sign company when I lived in Texas for seven years um, where I still use digital tools uh, such as uh, CNC routers, plasma cutters, and uh, laser cutters to make, uh, you know, again, digital designs turn into reality. Um, and then recently with the, um, you know, with the AI, I definitely combined all those skills into what seemed to be the, the perfect, uh, you know, perfect avenue for all of my passions have combined, um, you know, to, my use of digital tools to get back into more of a artistic realm. So I started calling myself an AI artist last year when I got into mid journey and other tools. And, and these days I'm doing a lot with video and music and, and consider myself uh, now an influencer in that space. I've grown quite a bit online, especially Twitter and working on my YouTube. And yeah, that's uh, basically who I am today. Awesome. Well, it's so great to to have you on the show. And uh, we we met at the uh, in person in real life at the Cincy AI Meetup for Humans, uh, which was so wonderful um, just to see you. But also, there's such uh, an emerging uh, burgeoning community here in Cincinnati. And one of the things that you shared is that you gave yourself a 30 day challenge. And was that kind of the the thing that kicked you off on on this path? Yeah, for sure. You know, again, I got into Mid Journey last summer, I think is when it was uh, really released in, in to its current form. And I, I wanted to do more than just static um, images. And so back then I called them slides, slideshow animations where you're just showing one image and another and adding music to the background. But yeah, it was about this time last year, end of October, that I did my first uh, video, animated video with using AI art assets. And I, I, I was blown away. It, it, the first one probably took me seven, eight hours to do 30 seconds worth or a minute. And I, I really loved it. And I thought, man, this has got some legs. I, I could take this somewhere. Um, I did study a bit of animation back in college, back in the 90s, and did a lot with After Effects back then. So I, I had a little bit of a background with that, but did not touch that for almost two decades. So um, I was really excited to get back into that realm. And so, yeah, again, it, that first, those first few took quite a bit of work. And I thought this is, this, I have to, I have to get good at this. So I gave myself a 30 day challenge where every day I would publish at least once one video, it, you know, it's minimum of 30 seconds was my goal. Um, closer to a minute is what I wanted. And man, I have not stopped. I've gotten up to maybe sometimes 60 minutes a week of publishing, which is crazy. And that's published video, 60 minutes worth. You know, some weeks aren't as uh, prolific, but and some have been more. And so that 30 days has now turned into a year and I, I haven't stopped and I'm going to keep going. Well, congratulations so much. And I'm even with these AI tools, uh, the amount, how prolific you are is extremely impressive. Um, and, and within um, the AI art that you uh, delve into, it seems like the, the real passion lies at um, AI music videos. So can you tell us a little bit more about your interest and how you got into AI music videos uh, specifically? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll get the the one you know secret is uh, it, it's actually easier than telling a story. Sometimes, I mean, music videos can and should <laughs> have a story, to be honest. But you know, with AI art to begin with, not being as you know, especially last year, not being real film quality, um, a lot of the results can be pretty artistic looking. So, music videos seem to you know lend themselves well towards that where it can just be a bunch of artistic looking abstract images thrown together so that that's the the secret there like you know they're actually easier than telling you know a, a, a five minute story sometimes yeah the other aspect of this is you know i grew up in a musical family my mother taught piano and i i learned um for most of my youth um how to and then you know tried to learn guitar for the past 30 years and failed always so that was another aspect of this is I also want to make music myself and make my own music videos, whether it be from rock to rap to anything. I, I, I you know, I, I definitely want to be, you know, my generation, I'm, I'm, I'm an X gens person. So I would love to see myself in an MTV, MTV style video. So I want to be a rock star. So I'm aiming towards that. But at the same time, yeah, I, 
I love working with other musicians, you know, especially people who have, you know, have a lot, are better than me at making music. So I've uh, now made a name for myself in that space where even this morning, um, right before this call, I got another um, band reach out to me from Sweden. I seem to get a lot from th that part of the world reaching out. So I'm working on a, about five different videos right now for different bands, all that reached out to me in the past few weeks. So it's uh yeah i love working with uh, musicians making their videos come to life well and one that uh, is really fascinating i watched it last night ahead of the interview and it was just really mind-blowing and i know for some of our listeners uh especially just the audio that we, you can't see it but we'll embed all these music videos onto uh, the dedicated uh, episode blog posts and link to ben's youtube channel so you so you can see this uh but is dev null and tell us how you came to work with them and then about the project itself yeah so um just to clarify too there are two musicians in the world that go by the name devnall again i think one of them is in also sweden but the other one is uh in brazil and it's the brazilian um person i'm working with and this summer uh, you know again as someone who dabbles in music but making music videos um, i i realized there's a huge opportunity here for me for musicians to be making their own videos and just like any creative person um, musicians seem to record a lot, edit a lot, maybe not finish a project, have hard drives full of music sitting there unpublished, un, you know, unreachable. And so I realized, too, for their sake, you know, to, to push their music out, um, platforms like YouTube and X are definitely going to get more reach than something potentially like creating a deal with a, a label and getting on Spotify. So I thought, man, all these musicians really need to start learning how to make their own videos for their music. So I put out an open call on X this summer, and I, I said that because two aspects of this. One was this is an opportunity for all these musicians to create video. And then two, if they don't, AI visual artists like myself who dabble in music are now dabbling in music creation. And there's all kinds of AI music generators out there that are getting better and better all the time. So that traditional musicians who aren't publishing themselves are going to be left behind with other people getting into music today, creating just a good quality tomorrow. So I put out this open call. I said, listen, do it or reach out to me. And ever since then, people have been reaching out to me. So, um, this guy in Brazil, Devnall, reached out and said, hey, I'm, I fit your profile exactly. I have dozens and dozens and dozens of tracks, a couple of albums worth that are just sitting here. I, I'm passionate about them, but I, you know, I don't know what to do. So he shared a, a private website he made for me to for us to collaborate on. And his album um, has about 21 tracks. And I fell in love with his music. It's uh, mostly electronic music, um, dance music, but also goes into different realms like jazz and even some classical parts. So I, I love the album and, and was just fell in love with working with them too. So um, creative people can be across the spectrum of like, here, I, I recognize your talent, take it over, do whatever you want or they can be uh, completely control freaks and want to direct the whole process. Um, but Devno in Brazil was really open to, he, he liked the work that he saw in mine. He said, just go for it. So with him, I, 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 with several of the tracks, I asked him more about each song. You know, is there a personal story behind them? Um, some of them he was really passionate about and gave a personal story behind it. And that really helped direct where the story would go. Um, but some of them, he said, nope, this one's up to you completely. I'd love to see your take on it, which was nice to have. And then the whole album has an overarching story about um, maybe a personal growth, finding themselves in life story. So I did about 12 videos within two weeks for um, him and that album. Through those videos, that helped expose him and me to more opportunities. So it was a, a really good project. And in particular with th those videos, I used a software package, another AI art tool called Neural Frames. And Neural Frames, it was just released a few months before that, if not weeks before that. And I've become one of the most prolific and most expert users of that platform. And I talked to that developer almost weekly on Zoom calls to talk about new features and bugs and such. So 
it's it's again it's a it I'm getting deep with this process and and really enjoy it. Yeah, and for our uh, viewers who want to geek out about the more technical aspects of Ben's work, there I did watch the interview with um, the founder of Neural Frames, and you guys go really deep into the making of the series, uh, which was really fascinating to watch. Uh, but one, one of the things that I thought was interesting in that interview was just kind of your creative process, uh, especially with uh, this band. Uh, or this gentleman who didn't have uh, lyrics to go with it. So can you kind of walk us through, especially because you're so fast and do so much, like how you approach uh, all of these projects from a creative aspect? Um, well, again, with, with him, I, I wanted to know more what these songs mean to him. He did have some, uh, some titles that definitely caught my attention for each track. And I said, oh, there's got to be a story behind here. And yeah, correct. Without lyrics, it's it's often very hard to figure out what the song is about. But these songs are so emotional. I think I mentioned to you uh, this morning that every time I watch my own videos that I created for him, I honestly tear up because the, the, the music itself is so beautiful. And I, I think in most of those tracks, I captured it visually. Um, so... I, the 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 application neural frames what what sets it apart from most any other AI video generator is you can continuously insert prompts throughout the the timeline of a track and you um, upload an image to begin with and now you can upload um, images throughout but you also upload the music track and then the software will separate that music track out into its parts and pieces, such as like the, the drums and the voice and, and other, you know, baseline and such. And I can use controls within the application to visually react to those different um, sounds. So it, it, it creates for a very audio reactive video and you can get dramatic with it or subtle and, and, Every second or every frame of those videos, there's probably five or six different controls that are interacting to different aspects of the um, to the music. And so with that, I can somewhat tell a story throughout the video. And again, the overarching uh, theme of his album was about growth through life. So the one character or characters that I made sure were in all the videos are these little tiny black figurines, just a silhouette of people as they travel throughout these visual landscapes. So it's uh, trying to show them go through growth challenges again, in an abstract way um, to try to fit that overall theme of the album. And then, yeah, there's so, so many subtle aspects that <laughs> it would take forever to go through each song and visually point out this is what's going on here but there's I do pay attention to every second and it's not a set it and forget it routine I'm, I'm constantly adjusting throughout one of those three minute videos for example takes about eight hours of time if I put that much effort into it and one, one of the things that also stood out to me well I guess to one the creator of this tool was so impressed with what you were able to do uh, using neuro frames uh, so that was really good to see and how you described your own artwork um, being you you would talk so much about like loving the texture of it and when I heard that in my mind it was like your fabricator background was actually coming out and coming through your uh, through your AI art and uh, so I was like curious like how much because uh, I've said this before on the show, like subject matter expertise often influences the the AI art and everyone's individual uh, individualistic styles also influences. But I was like really curious how you see like the the tactile and haptic aspects of your background really coming through uh, in in the music videos and the videos that you're creating. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up, Helen. That's a, I haven't really put that together myself, but yeah, absolutely. You know, my degree is in industrial design and, and, you know, that covers aspects from studying, you know, art to drawing to um, psychology of uh, um, design, uh, emotional responses to products, um, to engineering, to you know, manufacturing. And one of the aspects that even in school that gets often overlooked is color and texture. And, and that is such an important aspect to design in general. Um, and to me, what's, what's new that I only recently discovered, again, something maybe was overlooked in college, but um, the other part of these pieces of art, these videos, 
is the audio aspect. Again, whether it's a musical track or if I'm doing a, a, a short story with, um, with you know, people talking, the, the, the you know, music and audio, is I, I like to say, is the unsung hero of video. It's, it's so important. You know, it wanted, a great example was the movie trailers. If you watch a movie trailer with the volume off, it's, it's not even one-tenth as impactful. Um, it's all those, you know, swooshes and booms and bangs that make the trailer so emotionally fun. Um, but then, you know, taking that and trying to take someone who, you know, a musician who knows how to add texture to the, his music and then trying to visualize that in ways is, you know, just is such a opportunity, I guess would be the way. Um, and one additional element to uh, neural frames and specifically to this Devnol album is um, I was using neural frames again for a few months or many weeks before I met Devnol. And right when I did meet him, neural frames added a whole new um, language model model to neural frames, one that was released this summer, an open source one called um, Stable Diffusion XL. And Stable Diffusion XL is incredibly detailed, especially with texture. So yeah, I, in my prompts, half the prompts are describing the texture of the, the scene. And, and I mean, you know, grid-like neural wires covering, you know, rough fabric surfaces. I think fabric was in a lot of those prompts. So yeah, it, it, it's very responsive, SDXL, to my prompting. That was one thing I was going to ask um, if if you could share an example of one of your prompts, uh, just because your your aesthetic is so specific and and really impressive, because um, I'm sure ever everyone's like curious what you know what everyone else's prompts are. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Give me a little bit. We, let's keep talking, and I'll I'll pull up an actual um, neural frames video here and and see what some of those prompts are. Uh, and how I, and in one of your interviews that I watched, you said that you're you're always trying to move your style forward. How how would you describe your style if if you could now or where where you aspire for it to be? Well, most of my two thousands online, I was a very uh, prolific about politics and all that, and very combative. And so I'm trying to now get, try a whole new approach to social media and be have gives uh, uplifting positive messages. So that's a part of it too. I still dabble in uh, stirring the pot quite a bit, especially now staying away from politics as much as possible, but back uh, into um, even just the AI art community. I, I do like to get passionate about uh, certain things, especially when uh, I see people not try as hard as they should, because this is the opportunity of a lifetime. Um, so, yeah, my style uh, and approach to my content, again, I do try to be inspiring in a good way. Sometimes, again, there will be some negative aspects to it. Um, I recently did a video using neural frames about terrorism in the world. So that was uh, um, had some rated R language in it. But um, yeah, I, I, and I do try to keep continuously moving forward, not only with tools, but what I'm with my content. I'm, I'm Definitely trying to do more storytelling and traditional, you know, film in that regard. So, um, and then bringing actually storytelling over into the music video realm instead of just these abstract scenes uh, like a slideshow. But um, I did find a, one of the Devnol videos and looking at some of the prompts here. And I'll go ahead and read this. So this one starts out, a music poster with abstract shapes and textured elements in the style of graceful balance, high dynamic range, duck core. Now, I don't remember where I got the term duck core, but um, that was probably from, uh, I'll, I'll explain that in a sec, but um, detailed character design, industrial influence, circular shapes. So that's just one of the many prompts that goes into that video. And then, um, for example, the next prompt is about half the same, but I add in nostalgia, layered composition, circular abstraction, detailed characters. You know, very um, ambiguous terms sometimes, but when you do say in the style of graceful balance, that really does mean something to these language models and it does pull out a specific style so and then you know circular shapes obviously now it's going to throw in circles so 
it's uh, the abstract elements you can still control quite a bit of. It's not just throwing something at the wall and seeing what come, comes back. Um, here's some more in that same video. Um, black and orange stylized artwork of electronic dance music in the style of techno organic fusion Again, circular shapes, sepia tone, dance, colorful, eye-catching compositions, and again, graceful balance. So that seems to be a theme with this video. So those are, you know, very abstract uh, terms that actually mean stuff. It's, it's, you don't have to describe a, a, a you know, a hip hop artist walking down the sidewalk, which I did last night. But um, it's, uh, you can get really detailed with just, you know, words that mean things and about texture and, and shapes and colors. For all of our listeners uh, who are, you know, imagining what the the output of these prompts are, I guarantee that when you go and see the actual videos, your mind will be blown because whatever you're thinking, the the output is just like so impressive. Uh, so again, we'll be sure to to link and embed all these uh, on the dedicated epi episode uh, show notes. Um, uh, so thank you for sharing your prompts. And you said that you were going to get back to the, uh, what was it? The, the duck thing, um, how you came to that. Oh yeah. So a lot of times I'll use, um, even in the videos, I'll jump back. I'll, I'll, all my projects, I, you know, typically take six to 10 different tools to get to the finish line. Um, so when trying to target a specific style or texture or, um, look, I'll use Midjourney even if I'm not using it for images. I'll use Midjourney's describe feature. So Midjourney describe, if you don't know, is where you can paste in an image to Midjourney and it'll describe it back to you in text. And so often I'll get weird words that I've never heard of before, like duck core, and I don't even remember what that means. But um, it's you know that's that's where a lot of these terms uh, come from. It's using you know tools like mid-journey to describe images and see what that image is described as so good to know duck core we can we can all go down an <laughs> internet rabbit hole <laughs> um well <laughs> well and the the other thing that kind of stood out is your tech stack and how you're always testing new tools and how you use cross uh, pollinate a bunch of tools can you uh walk us through kind of your creative process from your tech stack uh, approach uh, to your projects and kind of some of your, I know you've mentioned neural frames uh, a bunch, but some of your favorites are you, you know, what you lean towards for mid journey, whether it's that text tool or, or whatnot. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll talk about a completely new project that I did yesterday. Um, actually the past two days published it last night. It was um, a rap video and this one used quite a bit of tools to get to the final uh, form. I used, first of all, I used ChatGPT to generate the lyrics. And um, I asked ChatGPT to generate this, the lyrics in the style of one of my favorite rap artists, Mac Miller, who's now passed away. But uh, Mac Miller had a distinct style in his voice, but also in his, uh, his own lyrics. So... I was blown away at how accurate ChatGPT mimicked his style. So I was just, I, did, I didn't even have to change the uh, lyrics it gave me. So I'll take, I took those lyrics and then um, in this case, I used an audio tool called Suno. Suno is a Discord only based uh, application right now where you can paste in a couple of lyrics, not the whole song, and it'll generate music um, to those lyrics. And you can also ask Suno for, you can prompt it for a specific style. So in this case, I, I prompted Suno for a, a Mac Miller song. I think I said slow funk hip hop was where I was going with that one. And um, it got it, amazing results out of that. Now with Suno, it'll only generate about uh Actually, I'm not sure, but let's just say 20 seconds at a time. So I, I, it would not generate a complete song. And each generation, it generates two different options. And each one is not always perfect or either of them can, both of them can be bad. But um, so I generated several, you know, dozen different parts to this potential song um, with pasting in about four lines of lyrics at a time. And um got and then collected the ones that worked together. Um, I edited those then together in Adobe's uh, uh, audio editor. What is it? Audition. And um, 
slice splice those together as one continuous track. And um, this had, you know, three verses. It had two or three versions of the chorus. It had a bridge. It had the outro and, um, and an intro as well. So traditional song uh, composition there for that. And so now I have my uh, lyrics, my 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 rapper, the voice, and the music to go along with it. But we're still just talking about audio. And then um, with this particular video, um, I wanted to animate text on the screen and then also have you know visuals behind it. So for this video, I used um, a new AI text to video generator called Moon Valley. And Moon Valley is this another uh, just you know, where you can input a prompt. So I took the lyrics from the song one line at a time um, and put them into Moon Valley, rewrote that line completely for each prompt because they weren't perfect as is from the song. And so just this one kind of did have a story to it visually. Um, so someone wakes up in the morning, walks down the street, and then goes throughout their day. So I was trying to maintain that. Uh, visual part of the video. And so from there, I generated uh, two, two and a half seconds, I think is what comes out of uh, Moon Valley for the short animation. So, and I did it in the style of anime. And so I have these cartoon two and a half second clips uh, coming out of Moon Valley that, you know, is just video, no audio to those. And then um, I edit the, edited them all together in a video editor called CapCut. And from there in CapCut, I put all the videos um, on top of the audio. And then I needed to do a, um, to animate text on top. And to animate text on top, um, CapCut actually has a really good AI tool that will listen to your music and generate captions. Um, but it doesn't always work perfect, especially with uh, layered music. So I, I tried a few different approaches to that um, where I, I first uh, had it you know, try to generate the captions from the song. And it only maybe got about 60 to 70%, um, and about 90% of that was accurate. So I then, um, again, my when I generated the voice and music, it was generated together with Suno. So I, I had to, uh, I wanted to get a more accurate caption, gener caption generator. So I used another tool that I just signed up for yesterday and already forgot the name, but it's an online tool that can separate out the voice from the music. And so I'd use that tool. It's an AI tool that use, does that. And I got a voice track um, separated out from the music and brought that back into CapCut. And there I got about 95% uh, of the text uh, captions extracted and, and that was 95% accurate. So now I have a timeline with the video, the music, and captions. And um, the captions, though, are usually four or five words long. In this particular video, I wanted to animate one word at a time. And that took a majority of the time with this video. The, everything I've talked about so far was about two hours of work. And now to splice up those captions into individual words was about three to four hours long after that. that. It was a lot longer than I wanted to put into it. But the results were amazing because instead of just showing captions at the bottom of the video, these are animated in, in, in circular fashion and swooshes and, and really add a whole character element to the story. So um, you can see that video on my YouTube and X channel. It's called AI in the Mix. So, yeah, that's a that's that's a typical process, but not always typically those tools. Oh, oh, thank you for sharing. I haven't seen that one, but I'm going to watch it uh, right after we get off. And again, we'll share the links and embed it in, in the interview or the dedicated uh, episode blog post. Uh, and, and what's fascinating too about the text is I know the AI tools have a really hard time with uh, generating text. Uh, so it's really fascinating that you found one that, that does it right, because I feel like they're, most of them are still working out the kinks on how to deal with fonts and text uh, within the image generation. Yeah, I think in the example you're talking about would be more if you wanted to generate an image with a sign on a building and the, the sign reads you know, something accurately. Um, in this case, I was strictly going after, you know, please extract the, the raw text that then I could copy and paste and animate separately. Um, but yeah, I guess that's actually pretty similar. Yeah. 
I mean, it, it, it was literally the tool that is used for making the closed caption captions. So that's what I mean by um, extracting the text from the audio and placing them in the timeline with the, the audio. So it's, um, yeah, it, it'd make more sense. Gotcha, gotcha. My, my mind was somewhere else, but yes, that makes <laughs> a lot more sense. <laughs> Um, well, and uh, you, you've worked on some uh, other really interesting projects, and one that you mentioned at our SNC AI Meetup for Humans is this uh, Terminator 2 parody. So I was wondering if you could uh, share with our listeners and viewers uh, what this project is. Yeah, for sure. I love this project. I'm blown away that it even happened. Um, it's still not public. I can't wait. Actually, today is the our, we're releasing our trailer for the whole project. So pay attention. It is amazing. It's so funny and so good. And I can't believe I'm a part of this project. So the project is uh, several AI artists, video artists in particular, um, uh, to Sway Molita and Nem Perez organized this project, and it's a parody remake of Terminator 2, the movie. And it's uh, supposed to be a long, you know, close to two hour long film, um, a remake of the thing as a parody. And it's with 50 different artists come, came together to do this project. And the initial timeline was three to four weeks. And it's really even only uh, 10 days, I think, was the production window. Um, not everybody finished their production in that timeline, but most people did. And, and there was still a few slots available to finish out and then miscellaneous parts like the trailers and, and different social media uh, teasers. But the, each artist was to produce a two to three minute segment uh, from, the, from the original movie uh, in a parody fashion and, and used any style that artist sees fit. So the whole movie will be a jump from scene to scene to scene with different styles it's modeled after a parody movie that came out about 10 years ago, uh, RoboCop 2 or RoboCop, the, the parody remake. And um, that was with live action figures and, and probably some special effects, but this is now an AI version. And the meeting, the kickoff meeting to this project was one of the most magical moments I've ever had online. Uh, it was a Zoom call with all, about 45 people. Um, we all got to see each other's faces for the first time and talk. And these are people that had signed up for the project. And not everybody that wanted to be a part of it was accepted. It was definitely a, a selection process. And then from there, we, um, we actually had our own internal selection process of how we chose the scenes that we wanted to do, because there was a few scenes that many people wanted to do. And um, I was really happy. I got the, my first choice of the scene. And um, it, it, uh, again, after that kickoff meeting, we had about 10 days window to do our two to three minute uh, piece. And, you know, with these music videos, the, the neural frames examples, I said, neural frames are very um, time intensive to create a video. I, I, again, a three minute neural frames music video will generally take me a whole day, about eight hours. Um, but when I'm having fun making uh, videos, I can be as quick as one minute in one hour. So it's, uh, you know, those are fun ones where I'm the client. I don't have to be so critical of myself and I, I just want to have fun with it. So I, I generally aim for one minute for one hour is my ultimate goal. I, I, speed is one of my goals. But for this two and a half minute clip for the Terminator movie, it, it, I spent over 40 hours in it. It, it pushed me beyond my limits and in, in different tools and areas that I've not ever used before. So it was definitely a challenge and I had a lot of fun making it. I threw in some comedy, some in inadvertent comedy. comedy. I'll, I will say this, the voice acting I used, you know, again, using AI uh, text to voice, the voice acting was so bad. It's so funny. <laughs> so there is that element to it that a lot of this is not meant to be a perfect one-to-one -one replication of the film. Um, so like I said, the, the, the trailer that uh, one of the artists put together from all of our clips should be coming out today, and it, it's hilarious. So definitely a, a historic and pioneering project for this field, and I'm just so happy and honored to be a part of it. It's a lot of fun as well. 
Yeah, well, congratulations for, for being uh, selected among the artists to, to participate. Um, you, you mentioned that it would it really pushed yourself. Could you explain or expand on like what were some of the biggest challenges or what spent or what you spent the most time on to, to really get the result that you're looking for uh, with uh, the, the scene that you worked on? Sure. My scene in particular is really three different scenes. And um, the scene is where a, a staff member at the, the secret military um, base that holds the Terminator arm and hand in stock and studying it and trying to understand where this technology came from. The opening scene to, to this uh, section is a continuous 40 second one take in the real movie where the camera follows these characters through a large room, setting the scene, having people talk, the camera turns around these people. And I've never done anything close to that in uh, any, any realm, um, except for potentially what's called a, a, a mid journey pan. And a mid journey pan is where you take an image from mid journey and keep panning in one direction and generating more and more and more and more of the scene. So you can get a super long image. And then to take that image in the video, you could simply just animate this long image across the screen. So I thought, oh, that's that's the closest I can get to making such a scene. So, but instead of using a long static image of this background, uh, again, just a, like a, instead of a long JPEG scrolling from left to right, I then turned that uh, long image into a continuous set of videos that were seamless and scrolling from left to right. So the background has a continuous stretch of videos scrolling from left to right of uh, the, replicating the same scene in this secret base. And then my, my, my style to my video was more of a cartoon look. So um, I just placed on top of that scrolling background of video, um, my two cartoon characters talking to each other. So it's definitely not as, well, I, I was going to say not as sophisticated as the actual movie, but honestly, I might have put more work into it than the, the movie did as far as um, doing a continuous scene in film is incredibly hard, but man, the approach I took was also really hard. Um, so that was the, the first scene in my section, and I, I'm really happy with the results there. I threw in some hidden jokes as well, um, some Easter eggs in that opening scene, a um, little bit more modern take to it. And then um, the next scene in my section was, um, this goes back into traditional filmmaking. I, I learned a new term and a new trick for me, and, and that's called a, a rack focus, R-A-C-K. And a rack focus is a shot in film where the camera will be focused on something, let's say, in the distance, and then it zooms and focuses on something in the foreground or vice versa. It could be focused on the foreground and focused and then change focus on the background. And so it shifts the view of what the person is seeing from, without changing a, you know, the camera or a cut. So that's called a rack focus and completely new term for me a month ago. And um, I nailed it. I love what I came up with. The, the rack focus you'll see is when um, the scientist uh, looks at the, the robot hand and it focuses from him to the hand and back to him. And it looks really good. And that particular rack focus scene I did did make the trailer that comes out today. So I was happy to see them recognize that. Um, so yeah, those were ways that this pushed me. And and, and now I'm, I'm learning all about traditional filmmaking and all their tricks and tools because you know, I... I I do talk about it often, but I don't know the vocabulary yet. I'm still a beginner in this realm. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely probably cringeworthy to experts out there um, that, you know, well, of course, the rack focus is called the rack focus. I didn't know what it was a month ago, but I'm learning and, and, and actually I'm participating in a lot of uh, online, especially on um, X. There's a lot of spaces with other AI artists that did come from a traditional filmmaking background where they're teaching us all these type of tricks and terms. So yeah, that was uh, what I learned from that project. Such a good teaser for us to watch the teaser in the full film uh, when it comes out. And uh, 
Well, I, you know, one, one thing that comes through, especially when, when we met and how you describe all your projects is like how passionate you are as an AI artist and experimenting and pushing yourself through these tools. And I was just wondering if you could tell us in your own words, like what, what brings you so much joy uh, in using and creating uh, AI art? Good question. Um, I think just as an artist, uh, I, I just want to show people out there, look what I did. Look what I did. I want attention, you know, like show me what, I, you know, show me you like it. That's all I want to hear. If you don't like it, don't tell me. <laughs> so um, I think, you know, there's a bit of an, a bit of an ego there, but I also am just bursting at the seams. I'm, I'm a creator of art and just, this has allowed me to be a lot more prolific. Um, I, I can, you know, go a lot faster. Fast has always been a goal of mine, even at the, even if I'm compromising quality sometimes. So I, I want to pump out as much as I can every day. It's an experiment as well. So the more I can pump out and, and share with the world and get, uh, you know, p- people's happy, nice responses, the more I'll, the more I'll keep doing it and, and get more focused. Um, again, that's kind of how I started with AI music videos was, you know, I didn't plan that a year ago and now that seems to be one of my specialties. So I'll, I'll keep experimenting and keep trying different tools and different elements. Again, I'm trying to get more into storytelling. Um, yeah, I just love creating. It's, it's a, a passion. Uh, my, I, I guess it starts back with my family. My, my dad was an architect, and um, I grew up with him as a woodworker as well. So grew up with that. And again, my mom was a musician and taught piano, but also she's a traditional artist and paints a lot and both of them made sculpture we lived uh, they were hippies we grew up in the woods so it was a really interesting creative background <laughs> so that's 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 probably where my drive comes from I, I love that. Well, and you know, you're kind of at the forefront of all these uh, AI video animation tools and testing new ones right as they come out. Where, from like, I guess, um, a trend or prediction, where do you see the next phase of uh, AI artists like yourself being able to create or what the tools are going to enable? Or if you, maybe just have wish lists of like what, what else that you want to see from, from these tools and in, in the space as well. Good question. Um, so w- one of the aspects, you know, that, that process I described earlier with the um, Mac Miller video I did um, it, it, you know, it used several tools to get the final result. Even, you know, when I signed up for that, you know, just last night. Um, so I imagine a future where a lot of these tools are all integrated into one tool. Um, I don't think they'll ever be the perfect tool for making uh, videos, but I, I imagine that, you know, the user interfaces are going to get better and faster and easier. Um, one of the uh, text to audio tools I use is called um, Koki, C-O-Q-U-I and Koki AI is a, uh, their interface is amazing for generating different scenes and parts of scenes. And it seems to be really geared toward people who have generated audio for traditional film in the past. So a lot of the traditional filmmaking tools are starting to their, their paradigms and and, uh, their traditional ways of going about things are now reaching their way into AI tools, which I really appreciate. Again, I don't, don't know that realm so well in the past, um, and then vice versa, too, we're seeing AI tools or AI technology get put into um, traditional video tools like Adobe Premiere. You know, Adobe had their Adobe Max um, conference last week where they announced all kinds of new tools, um, especially actually with in Premiere now in the new version, um, it can you know detect your uh, audio words and captions and then you can now edit video by selecting and copying and pasting the text captions instead of the actual video and the timeline. And I find that an amazing, powerful tool and, and hope to see a lot more of those integrations. So we're seeing it happen both directions, AI technology going into traditional tools and then a lot of traditional tools, uh, their setups reaching into AI tools that have come out. Um, yeah, I think uh, storytelling, and, you know, creating, again, what we think of as traditional film and, and television shows is, is going to be what we're going to see a major breakthrough in the next year. 
at this point, even though we're all trying to do stories, it seems like a majority of what people are making in this genre are just trailers to potential films and movies, which again, because trailers can be so powerful, especially with audio. So those are really impactful at this point, but a, a lot of us in my circles are really trying to build um, characters, um, you know, that might become part of a larger picture, a larger story. Um, we're also starting to see people come up with their own intellectual properties. So new characters that don't exist in the past, for example, um, we see a lot of people recreate, you know, Star Wars and, and, and use traditional actors that are, exist in real life, you know, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, for, um, for example. But we're starting to also to see people create their own characters. There's a guy in uh, Nigeria who created a character called, um, forgot her name, sorry, <laughs> Princess something. <laughs> um, but, you know, she his character is huge and he gets hundreds of thousands of views on every video he pumps out. And it's, you know, it's like a Disney character and it's getting much more views and reach than a lot of Disney characters would today. So that's where I see a lot of people going this year. It's, I no longer see the actor as a superstar. I see now the creator um, as a superstar creating these characters. So they don't have to compete. They can work together. In fact, Sway Molina, the, one of the organizers of the Terminator 2 remake project, he was an actor who's now using all these AI tools to create um, different versions of himself. In fact, he's he, he loves to place himself in his artwork and it's it, he's creating uh, uh, in, you know so extra characters that he interacts with and in, in different storylines and he's actually one of the first to actually create stories um, and have multiple videos of a series so I, that's where I see this happening soon it was kind of predicted by now we would see full length feature films um, you know just a few months ago people were screaming that but um, I actually I think our Terminator 2 project will probably be one of the first you know super long um, videos to come out so yeah, hopefully we'll see this uh, grow and blossom. Well, we'll definitely have to get you back on the show after after it comes out. Um, and one thing that you have kind of alluded to in uh, in this conversation, but also bringing up the Nigerian AI artists, is just how these tools are democratizing creativity and access, and how we're going to get so many more characters and stories outside of the traditional Disney's of the world. And I find that just like really, really exciting. Uh, so I was curious, like if there's any other uh, AI artists out there that you want to do shout outs or who are inspiring you with some other really interesting uh, projects as well. For sure. And I do remember it's Princess Jane is the character that um, our friend in Nigeria came up with. Um, one of my favorite AI artists that's very influential and helpful, helpful in this space is Dave Vallava. And Dave Vallava had a, um, he does have a background in storytelling, but he spent his, most of his adult life, past 20, 25 years in, in, he says, corporate America. And he finally, through AI this summer, decided to leave his traditional office job where he did a lot of traveling and sales. I mean, it, it sounds like nothing like an AI artist. And um, now that he's working on AI art full time, he's doing lots of X spaces throughout the week, um, inter interviewing other um, filmmakers, um, other AI artists that are, and he's really focusing around the art of storytelling. And um, he had someone on recently that gave us all a, a bunch of reference materials, um, a lot of books, you know, even like the vocabulary books of filmmaking and such. So he's really pushing the forefront of storytelling and his artwork is amazing. I think uh, in the past two months, I think he said he's produced 20,000 four second videos um, with uh, Runway Gen 2, which is one of the premier um, AI tools to create video. And so he's, he's creating so much so fast and he's discovered a lot of techniques. He's sharing, uh, uh, sharing those techniques daily. So yeah, Dave Villava is one for sure. Um, and I, I mentioned Sway Molina, one of the organizers of uh, the Terminator 2 project. He's, he's an inspiration to us all as well. And then my good friend Chet Bliss is uh, starting to get into video as well. Um, he's super prolific in uh, images, and he's really a, a mid-journey heavy user. He's also now dabbling with stable diffusion, and um, he's approaching 180,000 images in the past year that he's created. 
And now he's, I, he took on my challenge of do one video a day and you'll grow fast. So he's doing that now. It's happy to see Chet do that. I love that Twitter is such, or now formerly known as Twitter X, is such like a hub uh, for all this activity. And we uh, actually asked uh, some of your fans for you know questions uh, to ask you. So I want to make sure to include uh, that question. And it came from Jack uh, Aiki, uh, if I'm saying that right, or Aiki. Ike. Um, so he asked two questions that I'll put both of you or put forth uh, both of them for you. So he was curious your views on the Metaverse 2.0 and the Apple Vision Pro and 2024 for AI would be interesting and engaging. And your this is a lot in one question, but you can pick and choose what you want to answer. And your video and AI content rule make more build a big account. Um, so answer that however you would like to, to dive in. So, yeah, I was uh, so formerly an iPhone user who then transitioned into Android, and now I'm back to iPhone. And the reason I, I just switched back to iPhone was because I realized this summer when Apple announced their Apple Vision Pro AR goggles um, set up for next year, I realized, wow, there's no one that's competing in this space that has this type of ecosystem. Of course, I've been a Mac user, and now I'm happy to have my headphones actually work between my Mac and my, my phone. But that's what I mean about the ecosystem. When these goggles come out next year, it's just going to be a super game changer. There's always been you know, the dream of this type of technology, VR and AR, and I think Apple's going to finally pull it off. We're actually also seeing quite a bit of success with Facebook's Quest uh, three, uh, this, this just in the past few months, there seems to be more and more videos in, in at least the AI art space being produced of people creating, you know, truly amazing, mind blowing interactive experiences. Um, Apple seems to be focusing next year on, I think one of their big, uh, key types of content that's going to just explode is the 180 degree view type of image, not a full 360. I think a lot of people are going to consume this just looking forward and looking left and right. And I, you know, it's going to be an expensive product. The first generation, especially, is you know, three thousand dollars, I think. But I'm definitely saving my pennies and going to get one because it's it's it's. I want to create content for it. That's that's what I want to do. It's going to be a totally new ex way to create content and. You know, again, I'm trying new tools every day and trying to stay on the forefront of that. And and if I can create content for the Apple Vision Pro, I'll, and I'll, I'm assuming I'll be one of the first doing so. So hopefully you're going to be seeing my name in that space next year. It's coming soon. I love it. And uh, to that second question, I think uh, about creating content as much as possible. Um, I, that's one of my mantras. You create as much as you can because it'll help not only you personally, but, but to publish it, it'll help you professionally. Um, the more and more you publish, the bigger and bigger people you'll get. And I, I truly believe that. And it's, it's been through my own experience. I've witnessed that happen. And um, it's just that's how you grow big these days. Um, it's not about sending lead gen emails. It's about creating content and creating a reputation for yourself as someone who does that. Well, I know we're we're getting close to the end of our interview, although I know that we're just really scratching the surface for this topic and all the amazing stuff that you've done. Uh, but if you want our viewers and listeners to walk away with one thing or remember one thing from our conversation, uh, what is that one thing that you want them to to walk away with? I think it's that last bit about creating content. Don't be afraid. Keep diving in. I have people ask me all the time, you know, how do I get started? Just just start. You'll learn so much in the first days. But also give yourself that 30-day challenge of do one thing every day, um, you know, create something and publish it every day. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be long. It can be short and just a snippet. You know, that, that's how you learn. I, half of my posts that I think will go big or viral don't. And, and the ones that I think are just weak and short and easy are the ones that usually get the most attention. So there's no exact, uh, you know, algorithm for content, but you'll learn what people respond to for sure. So create, create, create. I love that. Yes. Keep creating. Uh, and how can people find you? And if there's any other projects you want to make sure to promote, uh, the, the stage is yours. 
Oh, thank you, Helen. Um, so on X, my user handle is Ben Nash, B-E-N-N-A-S-H, and it's the same user handle on almost every uh, social media platform. So youtube.com slash Ben Nash, uh, Facebook and Instagram, uh, Ben Nash. I'm not that prolific there. Most of my pu- posts are on um, uh, X and YouTube. Also, bennash.com is my website, though. That's kind of geared towards my previous life. I'll be updating that very, very, very soon. Uh, with a heavy focus on AI art and music video. And um, feel free to reach out to me on any of those channels, and I'd love to work with any other creative people. Uh, I I know when we met up, uh, you mentioned that these AI tools have just been such a life changer and game changer in the trajectory of your career and where you want to go. Uh, so I, I really appreciate you sharing your story, and hopefully it will inspire some other people who uh, might be you know, hesitant to dip their toes into it because it's, you know, I mean, the speed at which this stuff is coming out and what has happened in just a year for you. And I'm so excited for, to see uh, as your story evolves and unfolds and all the other amazing things that you're going to be creating with these tools and, and Apple Vision Pro. So thank you for sharing uh, some of your journey with us here here today, Ben. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate this opportunity to share myself. And I also am um, very happy to see your podcast and, and listen to it. It's also an inspiration to this space. So thanks for doing that as well. Thank you. The AI community has to stick together here. So <laughs> we're a very welcoming community. Uh, so thanks again. Thanks. Thank you for spending some time with us today. We're just getting started and would love your support. Subscribe to Creativity Squared on your preferred podcast platform and leave a review. It really helps. And I'd love to hear your feedback. What topics are you thinking about and want to dive into more? I invite you to visit creativitysquared.com to let me know. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for our free weekly newsletter so you can easily stay on top of all the latest news at the intersection of AI and creativity. Because it's so important to support artists, 10% of all revenue Creativity Squared generates will go to ArtsWave, a nationally recognized nonprofit that supports over 100 arts organizations. Become a premium newsletter subscriber or leave a tip on the website to support this project and ArtsWave. And premium newsletter subscribers will receive NFTs of episode cover art and more extras to say thank you for helping bring my dream to life. And a big, big thank you to everyone who's offered their time, energy, and encouragement and support so far. I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. This show is produced and made possible by the team at Play Audio Agency. Until next week, keep creating. Keep creating.